Okay, in this final part, I'm going to now fill in these empty spaces with uh, just a generic metal that I got. You'll see that the generic metal is a rectangular shape, but what I want to do is I want to grab just a square um, section of this so that way it'll fit on the squares of my cube. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my rectangular selection tool and I'm going to go ahead and just click and drag out a nice square shape. I'll copy that and paste it over here. I'll rename the layer and I'll just call it metal. There we go. And I'll go ahead and drag the layer below everything but on top of uh, the UVs. Um, now, so that I can actually see through it, I'm going to lower the opacity a little bit. There we go, something like that. Okay, and I'll take the transform tool and I'll go ahead and shift, click and select it and make it smaller. Okay, zoom in. So it is okay if you are going a little bit outside, that's fine. Um, you want to try to get things to match up pretty well. It might not match up perfectly though. Um, it's definitely okay if your textures go outside the UVs. So if it comes out here on the left hand side and the right hand side, that's okay. What you want to be careful of is if it spills over into the next one. Okay, so that's a pretty good size. I'm going to bring the opacity back up so I can see it. And I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to save. And now I'm going to duplicate. So I'm going to take this layer here and um, on the keyboard I'm going to press Command J um, and that just made a duplicate. You can see there's another layer here called Copy of Metal. And now I'm just going to take the Move tool and I'll go ahead and drag off the um, duplicate. So, and I'm just going to basically cover it up like that. I'll press Command J again, drag it off, and this is the uh, bottom of the cube actually. Okay, do that a couple more times. And I think we're all set. I'm going to go ahead and save it. Now I could combine all of these metal layers together uh, into one. Um, the disadvantage of doing that is that um, they would all be glued together and I would then um, sort of be stuck like that um, and I wouldn't be able to scale them up or manipulate them or anything like that. Um, the very last thing that I like to do in most of my uh, texture painting is after I've gotten my photos in here what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in one more layer at the very top. So I'm going to click to create a new layer and that new layer I'm going to choose the, um, the brush tool and I'm going to come down here and I want to find a pretty good just like a good grunge brush. I want to find something that's would actually be choose kind of a dark color here. Oops, that's not it. Okay, so that's a pretty good grungy brush. Um, it's a little too much like bristles. Um, yeah, a little too much. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to find a good grunge brush and I'll come back uh, once I've found it. Okay, so I'm back and um, I found one that I that I like. It's just called Sponge Texture um, and it's just this good kind of grungy, dirty, spongy kind of thing and if you and if you keep going over it, it will build up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to decrease my brush size a little bit. Um, I'm going to rename my layer. I'll call it Grunge. And um, I'm probably going to choose not pitch black. I'm probably going to choose like a dark kind of charcoal gray. And I'm just very lightly going to go over the edges. I'm just going to kind of darken things. Um, maybe I'll change my brush size a little bit. Just going to kind of darken the edges a little bit. Just kind of muddy things up a little bit. The things that typically need to be muddied up and dirt and dirtied um, are like these these panels. So these these computer panels. They look kind of too clean. So I want to put a layer of dirt and grime um, and mud um, basically on top of them. So you can see these look too too clean so I'm just kind of splotching them up 
just kind of dot, dotting and dashing around and just doing that. Um, can look a little stain like. This brush is pressure sensitive, so you sometimes you want to do some heavy pressure, and sometimes you want to do some lighter pressure. Um, change your colors a little bit, maybe get into uh, maybe get into some dark browns, so there's like a little bit of what looks like dirt, foot marks down at the bottom. Um, just kind of dirty things up. Again, around the edges where maybe things came in contact with it, got really dirty. Go maybe some pitch black places. Okay, we'll see what this looks like. <laughs> Might look terrible. We'll see. Okay, so I think that's going to be it for now, at least for this demo. Um, and so now let's go ahead and let's get this ready to bring back into Blender. So this is a Krita file right now, so Blender can't read Krita files. So I'm going to go up and do File Save As one last time, hopefully. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, change it back from a Krita file back into a ping file. There we go. And let's see, this is called um, Unwrap. I'm going to go ahead and call this Final. There we go. And I'll hit Save. And OK. All right, good. It's done. So I'm going to go back into Blender. Okay, so now what I want to do is I need to load this up. So I'm going to come over here to my materials panel. And if your uh, cube doesn't have a material, you would need to add a new material. This one already has a material, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete this material so you can see what this process looks like. So I'm going to hit the little minus here, and it, it gave me an error message saying basically you can't delete a material in edit mode. So I'm just going to go back to object mode. I'm going to delete my material. So this is as if you have no material. Um, so come over here to add a new material. I'll name my new material and I'll call it uh, Tech Cube. You can come up with a better name. Uh, I'll go to the textures panel and I'll say new texture. Call it Tech Cube Text. Uh, it's an image or movie, so that's the type is image or movie. I'll now come down here uh, where it says image, and I'll say open. I now need to go find my folder, or my image, sorry. Uh, and this is it right here. So there it is right there. Um, I'm going to tab back in edit mode. Okay, so now um, I need to... Da, 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 um, in my UV window, I'm going to come to my image picker and I'm going to choose this right here. Ta-da, there it is. Okay, so everything looks like it's lining up. It looks pretty good. So here's the big reveal. Um, so now I'm going to come to my 3D window and I'm going to press the letter Z and I'm going to choose texture mode. Okay, so I see it working. I'm going to get out of edit mode so I can see things. Now it's kind of dark in my scene. I'm going to also lift my cube up so it's um, right here on the grid. Uh, you'll notice that some of my sides I can't even see at all. So I could move my light. You can see it's it's moving around, so that's great and all. Um, what I like to do in the early days of texturing is instead of moving the lamp and instead of duplicating the lamp and just making more, is I just select my lamp. I come up here over here on the right, click on the lamp panel, and I just change it into a hemi lamp. And the hemi lamp uh, lights it pretty nicely and evenly. Okay, so now I need to see what is messed up. So for instance, I'm going to tab back into edit mode and I'm going to look at my top and the top looks pretty good. It's really shiny and the shine is annoying and it's unrealistic and I don't like it. So I'm going to take care of the shine first. The way you get rid of shine is you come over here to the right, you go to the material panel and down here where it says specular, I'm going to bring the intensity down to zero because this is a gross dirty um, cube and it should be uh, not very shiny. Okay, now I'm going to look at the sides. So you can see that this side here, this texture is actually flipped upside down. It should be the other way. So it's an easy fix. I'm going to basically select this face here and whoops, look at that. My UV disappeared. I'm just going to come back down here and choose it. There we go. All right, so here it is. It's this guy right over here and you can see that this UV is selected. So here's the easiest fix in the world. All I need to do is rotate this UV. So if I press R, you'll see that I can rotate the UV and I can just rotate it. But even faster than that is I'm going to press R and I'm going to type in 180 on my number pad and it rotates at 180 degrees and you'll see that that is now 
right side up, and it looks good. Okay, this one looks pretty good. It looks as if the way I planned it, but I could also rotate it 90 degrees, and I could put it that way. I'm going to undo that. There we go, just because I like it that way. Okay, I'm going to look at this one here, and I don't know why it is doing that. That is really kooky. Um, okay, so there's my texture. Again, the same thing. Select this, come over here, and I'm going to press R180 on my numpad, and now it is right side up. Okay, that is it. I think that's it, yeah. All three, and the bottom is just the bottom. So I'll tab out of edit mode. I can go ahead and hit save, and let's see what this looks like in game. Maybe I um, maybe I want to put a uh, put a ground underneath it. Again, the ground is. Uh, let's do this. This will this will be kind of fun as a bonus. I'll go ahead and I'll unwrap the ground. Um, I'm going to give the ground a material. I'll call it uh, ground mat make it less shiny, give it a texture, and I'm going to give it the exact same texture. So watch this. So you see that the UV is now there. Uh, obviously I don't want it like that, so I'm going to scale down the UV, and I'm just going to grab it and put it right here in the center. There we go. Maybe make it a little bit bigger. And there we go. So it's not meant to do this, of course. So it's it's pretty it's pretty bad. Maybe I can darken it a little bit. I'll lower the diffuse quite a lot, so it's really dark. Um, okay. So the ground isn't great. I'm not really proud of the ground, but you can see what I've got here. Um, and I've got my cube. And if I were to go ahead and Let's say if I change this to light, let's say I change it to a spotlight. Maybe give it a little bit more mood lighting. Something like that. Okay, and I'm in game engine, so if I press P for play, that's how that would look in game. So not bad. I could totally spend more time. I could I could go ahead and um, you know do some do some pretty uh, interesting stuff with this. Um, let's see, as a bonus, just so you can see here, maybe I'll go ahead and I'll put in a uh, keyboard sensor. I'll make it be the uh, make it be the W key. I'll add in an actuator. I'll give it some motion. Let's see here. And I'll give it some simple motion. I'll give it some rotation on the Z axis. There we go. Okay, so now if I press the W key, you'll see that I can actually rotate around my cube, so that's kind of cool. You can actually see all of these shapes, and all it's doing is rotating around on the Z axis, um, and that's pretty cool. Pretty happy with that. Uh, for not too much work, it's not too bad. If I actually put in some real effort, um, this would be pretty slick. So there you go. Uh, a four-part series, I believe, on how to uh, UV texture map with photographs an object and um, add in a little bit of mood lighting. All right, I hope this helped you out. Enjoy.